in this video we are going to see few key points what are and all to be written if the urinary bladder is asked okay so number one see this is a normal position of the bladder so if a student should know if he knows then only he can write the essay so this is the pelvic cavity and then inside this you will be having the bladder in the neck of the bladder you are having the prostate see the urethra is coming out as prostatic urethra and the mem membranous urethra lies inside the deep perineal pouch this is the urogenital diaphragm area right so we are going to concentrate only in the urinary bladder so when the urinary bladder is asked you should write the first point as location the location lies inside the pelvic cavity and then see here it lies behind the pubic symphysis and then if you see here look at this this is the pelvic cavity and this is the urinary bladder the parts of the urinary bladder you are supposed to write the surfaces this is the apex of the urinary bladder apex of the urinary bladder the student should know that is the embryology of the apex of the urinary bladder is your allantois and uracus through which the embryo or fetus urinates so this is the area where the urine comes out there is that is called as uracus the uracus after birth it gets obliterated towards the end of the intrauterine life it gets obliterated so the obliterated part of the uracus is called as median umbilical fold ligament the fold above the peritone the peritoneal fold above the ligament is called median umbilical fold so as a student the apex is related to one hyphen you should write about uracus another hyphen you should write median umbilical ligament right and then second base base is this place where that is behind okay or posterior surface so posterior surface in males if you see that is in females in this picture we'll see in females it is related to the body of the uterus and the cervix to look down so this is about the uh, posterior surface or base in females and uh, in females the superior surface is related to the this part fundus of the uterus will be lying on the superior surface right so you should know the apex you should know the base or posterior surface and the superior surface is in female it is related to the fundus of the uterus and infralateral surface means both the sides the significant point of infralateral surface is it is not covered by peritoneum and this infralateral surface means this pelvic diaphragm area down okay with the cavity is covered by outlet is covered by pelvic diaphragm the most important muscle of pelvic diaphragm is your levator ani so you should write infralateral surface means both the sides the muscle is levator ani and then it is not covered by peritoneum the clinical importance why it is not covered by peritoneum is if you want to take a sterile urine Uh, if the bladder is full that infralateral surface will be coming up over the pubic symphysis so you can put a needle here and then you can take it out this is called a supra pubic cyst ostomy you are not piercing the peritoneum right so this is called supra pubic cyst ostomy next is see in males behind the, this is the posterior aspect of the urinary bladder here you can see the vas deferens and the seminal vesicle behind that only you could see the rectum okay behind that only you could see the rectum so don't forget to write about this and then the important mcqs regarding this is vas deferens blood supply is artery to vas artery to vas is some may branch from the superior vesicle artery and uh, the vein venous drainage is internal iliac vein it goes to the internal iliac vein and this is a seminal vesicle joins with this two this is seminal vesicle and this is vas they both join together and forms the ejaculatory duct and this is about the posterior relation so you know in males the superior relation is just coils of intestine as usual the infralateral surface is same for both male and females that's all so you have read about apex you have read about base or posterior surface superior surface in males and superior surface in females and infralateral surface so this is over okay surface then if you see this picture it is clearly seen so this is the urinary bladder and this is the front anterior surface of the uter uh, urinary bladder that is related to the space called as retropubic space of retricus that contains fat and pubo vesical ligaments uh, in females and pubo prostatic ligaments in males okay so this is about the uh, retropubic space to prevent the friction of the bladder against the bone it is present and then next one comes here Uh, between the urinary bladder and the uterus in females it is called this uterovesical pouch there are this is a peritoneal pouch present here that is called as uterovesical pouch this you should write 
for the female okay in the male straight away you have the recto vesical pouch only the rectum and the bladder will be there so it is called as recto vesical pouch this is female okay right so in the males you will be having only these two so these are all about the pouches and look at this the interior of the bladder contains uh, two marks so interior of the bladder when you write you should write see superlateral surface both the sides you have the nice ureter orifices ureter opens here so both the sides you will be having that inferiorly you are having the urethra this is called as trigone of the bladder this between these two ureteric openings that bar is called interureteric bar of mercier this is a longitudinal muscle which gets thickened and forms this and the most important one here the mucosa is not thrown into folds because um, it is there is no submucosa so the mucosa is adherent to the muscle layer another one important point the trigone of the bladder alone mcq it is developed from the absorption of mesonephric duct right the rest of the bladder is developed from the endodermal cloaca so it will be asked in the vive also the bladder is developed from endodermal cloaca cloaca okay i accept the trigone of the bladder which is uh, derived from the absorption of mesonephric duct and the same thing the uh, in, uh, trigone of the bladder is supplied by the inferior vesical artery so these two are the important mcqs and the next see these are the key points we are supposed to write site it lies inside the pelvic cavity behind the pubic symphysis relations i have told you apex base or posterior and infralateral superior surfaces and the ligaments you are supposed to write the uh, important ligaments called median umbilical ligament which is the remnant of uracus and a few other ligaments we will see and then blood supply now supply clinical anatomy apex i said this is mcq uracus it is median don't miss a medial and the base in males and base uh, in females uterus and infralateral surface not covered by peritoneum should be underlined and the neck i have showed you the prostate is present in the neck and the blood supply is superior vesical inferior vesical artery and you have the vesical venous plexus which is press the venous drainage for this and then trigone of the bladder is developed from mesoderm and then there is something called as uvula vesicae that is nothing but the protruded part near the urethral orifice that is produced by the median lobe of the prostate that is mcq and then the ligaments you have to write from the pubis to the bladder that is pubo vesical pubis to the prostate that is called pubo prostatic and I already told you what is median umbilical ligament these three are the true ligaments and the false ligaments are folds the peritoneal folds are called as always false ligaments and the median umbilical fold just above the uracus it is median umbilical fold medial umbilical fold is above the obliterated part of the umbilical artery so both the sides you will be having the medial umbilical folds and lateral umbilical folds are the folds which is on the inferior epigastric artery so these three are the false ligaments if you don't write the false ligaments also we don't mind true ligaments are very important and the blood supply it is very important superior vesical inferior vesical because bladder is otherwise called as vesicae so you have to write superior vesical and inferior vesical and the extra two arteries are inferior gluteal and obturator artery in mcq in mcq they may ask this question okay instead of inferior gluteal they may give superior gluteal so you have to be very careful and then venous drainage is already i told you vesical venous plexus and then now supply is very important because the sympathetic is from l1 l2 and uh, it is uh, forming the hypogastric plexus from there only the supply comes over the bladder and the parasympathetic is s2 s3 s4 here in the clinical anatomy you have to talk about supra pubic cystostomy and cystitis carcinoma as well as the uh, neurogenic bladder so four points are must okay number one is cystitis it means inflammation or infection because of the infection there is inflammation of the bladder that is called cystitis number two transitional cell carcinoma it occurs in alkaline uh, the dye in uh, the people those who are like working in the chemical factories so they are prone for transitional cell carcinoma bladder carcinoma number three is supra pubic cystostomy as i have told you earlier 
the infralateral surfaces is not covered by peritoneum so what happens when the bladder gets filled up uh, the full bladder goes above the pubic symphysis and you can put the needle as an extra peritoneal approach because it is not covered by peritoneum you can get the sterile urine that is called suprapubic cystostomy and the fourth one is called neurogenic bladder the cetonic uh, automatic and autonomic bladders are all called as neurogenic bladder so when you write the sympathetic is lumbar plexus l1 l2 and parasympathetic is s2 s3 s4 and um, the third one you have to write the higher center for maturation is situated in the brain that is called as paracentral lobule so the signal from the bladder when the bladder gets filled up the receptors will be stimulated and it will be sent the signal to the spinal cord from the spinal cord it will be sent to the brain so this is how the pathway goes so if there is any spinal cord injury this pathway will be cut off so the bladder gets filled up and automatically the signal goes to the spinal cord from the spinal cord it will not be going to the brain straight away again it comes back to the bladder and the bladder gets emptied so it is called as automatic bladder uh, autonomous it will uh, it works on its own that's why it is called autonomous bladder right once the spinal edema is gone and the signal is getting the track again and then the bladder gets its uh, normal working limit so that is called as autonomous bladder you need not explain all this stuff you just write cystitis carcinoma and suprapubic cystostomy and the fourth one is called neurogenic bladder that's all so the mark distribution is site and number two relations number three in relations you are supposed to write the pouches and the ligaments and then fourth is the blood supply venous drainage and the lymphatics obviously it is going to the internal yak and then fifth one is the nerve supply is must and the clinical anatomy that's all about the bladder thank you